So obviously this is a tragedy. That that uh, is a statement that uh, does not begin to capture what happened here. Four lives lost. Two others who had serious bodily injury. As the law defines it, many many others who had physical injury, and many many more who had emotional injury. And I do not discount at all the impact on the defendant and his family as well. Families of the four who lost their lives, my condolences, my sympathy to you. As I was reading the victim impact statements and thinking back on the testimony at trial, and now having heard from folks here that I was struck by there's a holiday tradition in my home of watching It's a Wonderful Life and the message of that movie is that the meaning of a life is determined by the impact on other people Palatano, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Harrison, Mr. Lawrence. From that standpoint, they had wonderful lives because it's obvious that they had great impact on others. And it is terrible. I'm inadequate to speak to your loss. And I know it's going to be especially hard during the holidays. But I encourage you to support one another within your families, each other, support. Look for it. Use it. And for everybody, don't bear it alone. Look to others. Share that burden. who did not lose family members, who were injured or nearly injured, who were just impacted, that this has had long-term consequences. I was struck by one of the victim impact statements about the fear of just driving down the road and seeing a big rig.
restrictions on what I could do in this case. I'm going to speak to those a little bit before I impose the sentence. The legislature has told me through the laws of this state what I have to do at a minimum. The jury heard the evidence and I respect the findings of the jury. As a judge, as part of our legal system, the jury is the most wonderful invention for justice that man has ever developed. And I have to respect their findings. And I do respect their findings. But the combination of those findings and what the legislature has told me leaves me no discretion on a minimum sentence. The Robles case no longer applies. The Robles case was enacted when the statute said two crimes and it was changed by the legislature to say two or more crimes. And that change means that each and every crime of violence has to be sentenced consecutively. And I have looked to make sure that I am denied the discretion to find otherwise. Because I will state and if I had the discretion, it would not be my sentence. By the definition of the law, this was an extraordinary risk crime and that increases the range. It was a crime of violence and that mandates both a prison sentence and consecutive sentencing. I want to be clear to everyone often when we think of sentencing we think of closure for the victims and an end point for the defendant of what he's facing and for his family and friends. I cannot assure you that we have reached that end point. Mr. Marisky referred to that and I would say that perhaps the legislature in imposing a requirement of consecutive sentences had in mind that there might be cases where a judge should give it further consideration after hearing from the Department of Corrections. And this may very well be one of those cases. In all the victim impact statements I read, I did not glean from them someone saying he should be in prison for the rest of his life and he should never ever get out. Far from it. There was forgiveness reflected in those statements but also a desire that he be punished and serve time in prison and I share those sentiments. This was 
such a terrible, terrible event, impacted so many people. And I accept and respect what the defendant has said about his lack of intent to hurt people. But he made a series of terrible decisions, of reckless decisions. And I also understand from his fellow truck drivers what they're saying about this could happen to anyone. I have to say, to some extent, one, two of those things, maybe. But this number of things, I think not. I have no desire personally to see Mr. Aguilera Medeiros in prison for the rest of his life and away from his wife and son. I, don't, I do not know how this will ultimately resolve. I have no qualms that he deserves time in prison in the following sense. Given all the sentencing requirements that I need to consider as an example to others, given what the harm was that was inflicted, And simply the fact that a big rig is something that could inflict horrific, horrific damage, and in this instance did. It is not punishment of the defendant for being a bad person this punishment for his actions and the results of those actions. So as I indicated, the law gives me no discretion other than to choose a range within the range on the first six counts. The range is 10 to 32 years on each count. The court sentences the defendant to the minimum part of that range of 10 years, but 10 years on each of counts one through six to be run consecutively as required by the statute. Similarly, the range on counts 7 to 14, 20, and 21, the criminal attempt charges. Again, they are crimes of violence as found by the jury, consistent with the evidence. The range is 5 to 16 years. I choose the minimum of the range of 5 years, but it's 5 years on each those counts and again they have to be run consecutively all the assault convictions have to be run consecutively and again if I had the discretion if I thought I had the discretion I would not run those sentences consecutively which is not to say that I would run everything concurrently I might choose a different minimum partly reflected in my sentence on the vehicular homicide uh, charges. For counts 
31, 32, 33, and 34. Sentenced the defendant to five years to run consecutively because there are four victims. But concurrently to the other charges and to the extent they merge, they merge. Thirty counts thirty-five and thirty-six, vehicular assault. three years in the Department of Corrections on each count, concurrent to one another and concurrent to all others. Count 37, reckless driving. Time served of 83 days. Counts 42, 43, 44, and 45, careless driving resulting in death. One year of jail. All those counts are concurrent to one another and concurrent to all other sentences to be served in DOC. Eighty-three days of pre-sentence confinement credit is reflected in the PSI. Colgan, does your client need to be advised for Central Rule 32? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Aguilera Medeiros, you have the right to seek review of both your convictions as well as my sentence. There are two different aspects of this, actually three different aspects of this. One, you have the right to seek an appeal within 49 days. Under the statute by which I sentenced you consecutively, I will receive a report from the DOC and you have the opportunity to seek reconsideration of the sentence under that statute as well as to seek a reduction of your sentence under Rule 35B within 126 days. If you are indigent, counsel will be appointed to represent you for any of these post-trial matters, including any appeal. I will give your counsel 14 days to advise me whether the restitution amount is contested. To the extent I impose restitution, which is likely, simply the amount that will need to be determined, you ultimately will have the opportunity to show that you're unable to pay that amount or that there should be special circumstances for the payment. Is there anything else from the people's standpoint that I should advise the defendant under Rule 32? Not from the people, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Colgan, any questions about my advisement under Rule 32? No, I believe that was answered. Is there anything else from the people? No, Your Honor, thank you. Anything else on behalf of the defendant? No, sir. Again, my condolences to those who have lost both loved ones, injuries, emotional stress of unbelievable magnitude. Good luck to everyone. Thank you. Court will be in recess.